I welcome you all to the first lecture of optical sensors course. Today we are going to discuss the very basics of the sensors and biosensors and the components involved in this and what are the basic characteristics. So, here is the outline of the talk, we will first introduce sensors and biosensors and uh, then uh, we will see the market overview and need of biosensors, why do we need them and what are the components and their functions and finally, we will discuss optical parameters which are required for transduction in this kind of sensors. So, a sensor is a device which measures a change in one physical parameter in terms of magnitude of a second different parameter which can be measured more conveniently and perhaps more accurately. What is the meaning of this thing? This means that you want to measure something in terms of something else which can be measured more conveniently and accurately. I have listed here a few examples of sensors. For example, this thermometer, what it does? It measures temperature, but in terms of what? In terms of the length of this column. So, you see that if you increase the temperature of this room say by 2 degree centigrade, you hardly feel any change, okay. but this device it can tell you how much change in temperature occurred by measuring the change in length actually. So, it measures the length which can be measured more conveniently and more accurately and then it translates in uh, temperature. Another example is this old time coal miners biosensor this yellow canary bird, which actually coal miners used to bring to coal mines in old times. And what happened actually that when there was some unpleasant situation say some leakage of methane gas or something, then it will start crying. So, they know that the, now this is the time to evacuate uh, the mines. I think that they chose a yellow bird because they wanted uh, to see it uh, easily even in dark. Now, you can see a conventional glucometer which is commercially available in the market. It actually measures current, it is an electrochemical sensor and it translates this change in current in terms of glucose concentration in blood. Here is a conventional pregnancy kit which measures the HCG hormone in urine and this infectious uh, disease biosensor uh, detects a tuberculosis. Say for example, one has the patient has to go and cough in here and the vapors from the vapors you know that the person has tuberculosis or not. So, these are some kind of sensors, but out of these sensors what you can do is that we can categorize for example, these five sensors in two groups. One group is a sensor which is quantitative while the other sensor is purely qualitative. What does it mean? It means say for example, this uh, coal miners biosensor yellow canary bird or pregnancy kit. It tells you that if the situation is there or not. For example, this coal miners biosensor tells you that there is an unpleasant situation, but it does not tell you that how unpleasant, it does not tell you that how much amount of gas leakage is there, but there is something which is unpleasant and then it, it, it starts crying. This pregnancy kit, it tells that either the lady is pregnant or not, it does not give you any information that how much pregnant. So, it is a qualitative sensor. Now, come to the thermometer or glucometer. It tells that the patient, the, uh, let us say uh, focus to the thermometer. So, the thermometer it says how much change in temperature occurs. It says that there is a change in temperature and also that how much change in temperature occurred. So, it is quantitative. Similarly, a glucometer it tells you that there is a change in glucose concentration in blood and how much change, it also measures the concentration. So, it is qualitative and quantitative. So, 
we can divide this whole branch of sensors in two parts one is qualitative others is quantitative so they have different uses you 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 can could have seen from here let us see what is a biosensor there are lots of definitions in 1996 i will just read it uh, iupac you know iupac international union for pure and applied chemistry they defined a biosensor like this a biosensor is a self contained integrated device that is capable of providing specific quantitative or semi quantitative analytical information using a biological recognition element which is in direct spatial contact with a spatial transduction element i'll explain it later but let us see another definition which was recently published a sensor that integrates a biological element with a physiochemical transducer to produce an electronic signal proportional to a single analyte which is then conveyed to a detector and then a very simple one any device that uses a specific biochemical reactions to detect chemical compounds in biological samples that can be called a biosensor so from here we take home message is that any device which uses specific biochemical reactions from all the i mean this is the essence of all these definitions and it detects something in biological samples that's all so why it's important actually because we are polluting almost everything i'm only talking about biosensors here and you can see that be it air water or food yeah yeah we are putting lots and lots of pesticides to grow more and more food but at the same time these pesticides the remnants of them are still there in the food and what will happen if we eat them lots of diseases cancer diarrhea yeah, bacterial infections you can think of say a fish for example grown in this kind of water what will you get this kind of fish which is already contaminated yeah and what will happen if you eat this you will be subject to various diseases yeah for example this dog has diabetes so diabetes is a very common disease so it's very important to detect them and this is only biosensor i'm not talking about the sensors in defense or in automotion in uh, uh, everywhere else you can see that the market overview of it that the global market in, in uh, billion dollars is increasing at a rate of about 2 billion dollars per annum so by 2024 it will be about 30 billion dollars us dollars so there's a huge potential and requirement for biosensors and that's why this course let us see what are the components of a biosensor so if you have a biosensor there should be a surface which interacts with this biological molecules which senses this biological molecule this is called sensor surface so the molecule of interest is called analyte you have a molecule which you want to sense in a matrix of elements say i have put uh, uh, different shapes here to see that there can be lots of molecules and from there i want to detect only this kind to detect this particular molecule we need some bio recognition element or bio receptor what it does is actually that it is it leads to a specific attachment of this particular molecule it doesn't bind to anything else it's very simple it's like this pen you have this cap and you have this pen okay suppose i attach this here on the surface and i have this pen it's a molecule it's a free molecule it comes and binds in here very specifically what will happen if i bring this one say another molecule it doesn't fit in here that's how this works that's how this works and then we have an an agent called anti fouling agent 
what it does is that it blocks any empty area on the surface so that no, no nothing else can go and bind in there so it's like uh, it's called to avoid any non specific binding we put this molecule here which fills up all the empty area apart from this bre okay so now we have a surface which is very very specific to this particular molecule this molecule goes and binds in there very fine what happens next when it binds over here it will lead to change in certain properties maybe it will lead to change in ph or refractive index change or maybe change in mass or heat transfer or many things it can change to current or something or something and whatever change take took place here we want it to be readable so there should be some mechanism which gives us the change in a readable output whatever change occur due to the binding of this molecule so that is the role of something called transducer what it does is actually it translates the effect of this binding into a measurable signal which can be an optical signal or electrical signal or acoustic or maybe change in dimensions i told you that the change in length was there in uh, thermometer so there can be this kind of things and once you have this measurable signal you send it to the detector okay you send it to the detector so this is how you make a uh, biosensor now let us discuss one by one these uh, components so let us see analytes analytes are chemical or biological or environmental elements that need to be sensed so anything you want to sense is an analyte it can be a natural hazard okay like pesticides environmental pollutants blood or urine analytes say glucose you can have say cholesterol cholesterol you can have ions maybe bilirubin jaundice all these parameters in a urine or blood whatever you measure these are all analytes vitamins now environmental pollutants you have say carbon dioxide methane and all these gases industrial waste biochemical waste biological waste from the hospitals you get tons of syringes and this uh, blood soaked cotton and all these things never know you want to see something uh, in the food if there are pesticides or there are uh, preservatives ambient conditions if there is humidity there is change in temperature change in pressure gases as i told you you want to measure oxygen hydrogen nitrogen maybe in some samples hydrogen sulfide methane there is lot of use in petroleum uh, uh, you know uh, sector endocrine disruptors you are eating something in, they can be found in uh, say uh, cosmetics you can have lip, lipsticks and uh, these uh, powders and all these creams they all have this kind of uh, elements which can cause to endocrine disruption there can be pathogenic bacteria say in your water so you want to detect them or other food related issues if you, for example you have meat you never know that it, it is infected with bacteria or viruses so you want to detect them so there is there is a whole range of uh, elements i mean it's a wi very wide field you can have analytes say from defense sector to food to environment to water to blood to everywhere okay and they are very important to us so these are the molecules then you have receptors or biomolecular recognition elements you want to have certain molecules which need to be attached on the sur sensor surface and you want them to be very very specific to the analyte molecule that's called receptor or biomolecular recognition element this bre or receptor 
is something which needs to be fixed on the surface of the sensor. So, that the analyte comes and interacts with it like, like I gave the example of this pen. So, the molecule comes and fits in it. So, this is BRE, it has to be very very selective and specific. It is not like if this is coming and something else can also come and fit, no that is not acceptable. So, it can be various types, it can be enzyme based, you know what are enzymes? So, enzymes are uh, molecules which increase or decrease the reaction rates in the body metabolic process processes. So, something comes and binds on the enzyme say a ligand and when it binds it increases to gives us a byproduct which can be uh, which can be used for sensing. Then you have immunosensors antibody antigen based sensors what it does is actually that you have either antibody and antigen one of you it works as a receptor one of it works as an uh, analyte and you use it for this. Then you have DNA based sensors which are nucleic acid based also have you have cell based sensors or tissue based sensors. So, there are these are various kind of sensors people use and then you have transducers. As I told you that it converts one form of energy to another form of energy that is a basic definition, but what it does in the sensor is that basically it transforms this binding phenomenon or interaction phenomenon from between the analyte and the BRE into a measurable output signal that is a transducer. So, when I say optical sensor that means the transducer is optical, it is giving us optical readout. If I say a electrochemical sensor that means this sensor has a readout which is due to electrochemical processes. If it is a piezoelectric sensor that is the transducer is piezoelectric. So, you name a sensor the method it is basically the transducer. Okay. So, for example, we are, I have uh, shown this diagram here that you can see that a transducer can be electrochemical or piezoelectric, a thermometric or optical. Electrochemical can further be divided in amperometric, conductometric, potentiometric. What does it mean actually? It means that say for example, you have an amperometric sensor, what it does actually? It means that, so in electrochemical sensor you have electrodes, basically three electrodes and uh, what you do is that, when there is this interaction is taking place between the uh, receptor and the analyte, there is a change in current. So, you measure the change in current and that is why it is called amperometry. When you measure the change in conductance, it is not you measure actually, actually it is the parameter which is mostly getting affected. I will tell I, I will come to you why why we need a parameter which is getting most affected due to this that I will come to you later, but for now take my word that you have this kind of interaction and then there is a change in current between the electrodes. You measure the change in current that is amperometry you measure the conductance that is conductometric and if you measure the change in potential drop that is potentiometric sensing. In piezoelectric actually the, the transducer is like if you attach something on the piezoelectric crystal what happens actually there is a change in mass. The change in mass leads to change in the vibration frequencies. So, you can measure this small change in vibration frequencies because this piezoelectric means that it will change the pressure. So, you transform that into the electrical signal and that is how you use it tra for transduction. In thermometric ones you measure the change in heat and that is how you do. In optical transducers basically you measure the change in optical signals. So, there this interaction took place and this leads to some change in optical properties. Okay. So, we know now the basic components of an optical sensor of any sensor. Now, we want to make a sensor chip, how do we make it? You take a transducer surface, you put a cross linker, the job of a cross linker is to attach the bio recognition element 
on top you know sometimes this element can directly get attached to the transducer surface then you don't need to put a cross linker but many a times this molecule cannot directly get attached to the surface you need something say an adhesive for example kind of i mean you can use a word vaguely like adhesive you need an adhesive to put this molecule on the sensor surface after you have put it now it can catch the analyte but then there are lots of spaces which are not filled it's like this you have a surface you put molecules here 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 all these places good and this places the analyte can go and bind on here but you have lots of space here which is empty here okay all this space so anything can go and bind on it this will create a false signal so it's very very important for us to block all these sides all these sides so that nothing can go and bind on here okay and how do we do that we choose a molecule or something which goes and binds in all non specifically on all these things on all this surface you know sometimes you will have this cross linkers which are unbound like here so you have this cross linkers which are unbound here here one so what will it do any can any molecule can go and bind here which is not binding here maybe it will bind here so the job of this agent is to block all the non specific binding sites and once we are done with this we get a sensor chip so you get a sensor chip which only has this bres open for binding everything else is closed okay and when you have an analyte it goes and binds on these sites it doesn't go and bind any else if you have another molecule it doesn't go and bind anywhere that's how you make a very good sensor surface now when we come to optical sensors so optical sensors are generally based on measurements of changes in any of the following optical properties it can be absorbance in chemical reaction it can either of reflectance and transmittance it can be change in refractive index it can be based on change in phase shift it can be change in polarization or it can be based on change in light energy so it can either be a fluorescence based sensor or raman based sensor so if i write uh, the most general equation of the uh, plane wave incident on uh, any medium and uh, want to see what kind of parameters are there which get changed so you can write it like this exponentially e to power i omega t minus k dot x and plus initial initial phase phi so suppose this is an a plane wave which is incident on some medium and you want to see what are the optical properties which can get changed so if it is change in amplitude then it will lead to sensors based on absorbance or reflectance or transmittance and many times change in uh, fluorescence intensity or raman intensity and uh, when there is change in k or omega or change can be in phi and then this z so there are basically these parameters which can change so it can be either of this or this or this parameter or this parameter and then this parameter which basically can be monitored and uh, the optical sensor can be based on any of these so 
as I already told you that when it is change in amplitude, then the sensor is basically absorbance or reflectance or transmittance based sensor or basically change in fluorescence intensity or change in Raman intensity. And this k is equal to omega by c into n. So, if this n is changing, basically this k is changing and it gives the direction of propagation. So, suppose this is in x direction. So, basically let us say that the wave is moving in x direction. So, so this refractive index if changes then it leads to change in k. So, if this kind of plane wave is incident at that medium and the wave which came out if it has different k that will give information about n if there was no change in omega. Also, if there is change in omega which is like uh, you sign with some light and uh, and you are measuring say lambda and then there is a change in lambda. So, there is suppose this is intensity versus lambda curve and what you see here is that if there is a change in lambda then it is change in wavelength. So, basically it, it is like fluorescence or Raman based sensors. This initial phi can also change and uh, that will also get reflected in terms of the absorbance or transmittance and uh, by measuring the change in phase you can say that what is the property of the uh, medium. Another property is the polarization. So, suppose you send a linearly polarized light through a medium and then after passing through it, it is orientation changes. So, by measuring the change in orientation of the polarization of uh, light, you can say that what is the nature of uh, this material. So, many times it can be a levo rotatory or dextro rotatory material and depending on the changes uh, in the polarization vector, you can say that what is uh, the property of that particular material. So, an optical sensor can generally be based on any of these kind of parameters. Why would need optical biosensors? Because they are very small, they are flexible, they are very very fast, they are safe because there is no electrical device to interconnect, they have very good biocompatibility, fibers are glasses, there are maximum glasses most of the times or you use noble metals silver or gold which is good for health, you wear it all the time. Yeah. Disadvantage is that the optical signal may not be strong enough many times. For example, fluorescence. If you have a single molecule, the fluorescence is very weak. So, we will discuss this uh, as the course progresses. So, to summarize my talk today, we introduce what are sensors and biosensors and what are the components of the sensor, how they work and what are their types and then we discussed the various optical methods which can be probed optical properties and then we use it for optical sensing. Thank you.